All right, everybody, this is a video on how to run the Homer 2 block average in the nearest toolbox and specifically actually how to plot a average value for channels. So that I'm going to do it fairly simply. Hopefully it can be extended fairly easily for uh, your application, but hopefully this will give you a little walkthrough. So I'm going to run through some basic code here. First couple lines is just going to be clear all, close all. Um, once that's run, it's going to ask me for my data set. So one thing I do want to specify is I have my data set actually added to the path. Um, I have Homer 2 added to the path, and I have the nearest toolbox added to the path. I definitely need Homer 2 and the nearest toolbox because I'm going to be using both here. So I'm going to press F9. It'll go ahead and ask me for my data set. I am actually just going to do a single data set. I did run it on two groups, and it should work just fine. Uh, but this will move things along a little simpler. So I'm just going to do my first subject here. And I'll run it through. There we go. I have my data. And it actually looks like it did not go through. So let's run that again. Let's go to group subject. Uh, let's go to control. And let's try subject two. See if that goes through. There we go. Loading. OK, so subject one was a little wonky. Once it's loaded, there we go. I have my data one by one. All right, I'm going to create my stimulus names. I'm going to change them from stem channel 1 to left hand and stem channel 15 to right hand. I think I actually have a video on that if you need questions on that. So I'll go ahead and run that first step in my job pipeline. Then I go ahead and run a trim baseline. So I remove pre-time pre and post-time. Convert my data to optical density. Go ahead and run that. And then I will also go ahead and run the Beer-Lambert law and create my hemoglobin variable by running that on my raw edited data. So this code here is actually how to run um, the, basically a block average using Homer 2 code. It's very messy. It works, but I wouldn't suggest it. I'm going to skip over doing the GLM. What we're going to go straight to is this block average. The block average, there is a separate video on how to run this or, or what you know how to call Homer 2 in the nearest toolbox. So I won't go into detail on that, but what I'm going to do is create an empty job or a new job which is going to be the Homer 2 block average. I create a pre-time and a post-time, which is negative 5 and 20. It means compared to my stimulus, I'm going to go 5 seconds prior and 20 seconds after. Let's go ahead and run that. And now I'm going to run this on my hemoglobin data. So one thing you can do when you run it, you do j.run. I'm running it on my hemoglobin variable, and I'm running it only on my first subject. I, I have only one subject, so it doesn't really need that. But if you have multiple subjects and you want to run them on multiples, you would just call the full variable. Otherwise, um, select your subject. So go ahead and run that. And now I have a BLK uh, data set. And I can actually just draw it. So very simply, I can select draw. And it will draw every one of my channels uh, and both conditions. That's not what I want right now. If I want to be more specific, I can select the specific channel uh, that I want to draw, uh, but I'm not going to do that. So what I want to do is I'm going to select or figure out how many channels I have. So I take my data, I take the second dimension, and I divide that by two. If I go to my data here, I'm in, uh, let's see, BLK, right? I go to data, so I'm in here. Second dimension is the channels, but the uh, channels are doubled because you have HBO and HBR. So the first 20 in this case is HBO, the second 20 is HBR. Then I'm going to figure out how many conditions I have, or excuse me, I'm going to select a single condition from this data set, and that's the third dimension. So if I go into here, I'm going to find my time set, my channel set, and my conditions are my third dimension. Here I have four conditions. I actually thought I only had two, uh, so I don't know what those extra two are, but I'm only concerned about one. I'm just going to look at condition one here. So let's go ahead and run that. There we go. I'm going to create a figure now. And what I'm going to do is take the mean of my first channel and the mean and, and my second channel and designate that I'm looking at the, the second axis here. If you do the first, you just wind up getting like the number values, I think. And nothing, nothing overly interesting there. Um, so I'm getting the mean value. I'm going to call that HBO average, right? So that's going to be basically the first column. This is the second column, or first channel, second channel. 
And what I'm going to do for the HBR is take those exact numbers, the first column and the second column, but I'm going to add to it the number of channels I have. So basically I go with channel 1 and channel 2 and channel 21 and channel 22, knowing that I only have 20 channels. So let's go ahead and calculate that and I will plot this. Okay. So here is the average of my first channel and my second channel. And I'm going to check that in a little bit, but first I'm going to click hold on. So this will allow me to also plot the HBR. So if I go back, there we are, we have HB and HBR. So check the Y axis here. Um, note the blue line in particular. And then what I'm going to check here is create a new figure. There we go. And we're going to compare these two. So there we are. So I have figure one and figure two here. And if you look at, in particular, the blue line, that is the comparable data set here. And this on the right, recall, is an average of two channels. This on the left is that single first channel. So we're going to check to see if these are equal or if they've been you know, smoothed out because I've averaged these. So if you check the peak here, right around 160 something seconds, there we go, 162. The peak value is around 13.5. If I go here, is it gonna let me? 11.2, so it has been smooth. You can also look at the peak over here. It's under five, well under five here. If I click on it, it's uh, about two. If I click it here, we have four. So it has smoothed it out. It has averaged these values. So it's a little messy. You know, you actually have to call a function outside of the toolbox, which I'm sure anybody's used to by now. But you, all you have to do is create the mean for those channels. You can, of course, add more channels in if you wanted to, um, and then plot them. So you won't be able to do the blk.draw. And as far as I know, there may be, as far as I don't know, there may be um, a way to do this outside of this, but this is a relatively simple uh, way to kind of put a Band-Aid on it and get what you need.